On today's show, we're going to be talking about youth and science. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My guest today is Karen Burke. She's the Director of Regulatory Affairs for Amgen Canada. She's here to talk about her amazing career in the sciences. Now you'll meet her in a moment later in the segment before we take a break. I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And these are Karen's. Well, Karen Burke, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, it's nice having you here. Now, you um, work as the Director for Regulatory Affairs for Amgen Canada. You actually are also the pr past president for the Canadian Society for Chemistry. Yes. Uh, you've had a long-standing career um, working in, in sciences. Um, let's talk a little bit about the beginning of your career and, and what you've done and what inspired you to follow a career path in the sciences. It's interesting, you know, ever since I was very small, I've always liked the idea of chemistry. You know, I like test tubes and making solutions and things like that. The idea of it... I'd be know, like a mad scientist? That, yeah, that's what I <laughs> thought it was going to be. Okay. And, you know, when I got to university, that was the, that was the, ch uh, the path that I chose. And I went in, you know, doing my bachelor's, and, and it, it was different than I expected. But, I mean, there was still enough of that fun stuff, the, the explosions and the glowing gas and things like that. There was enough of that that made it really still fun for me. And um, I carried on, did uh, my PhD in chemistry, and eventually that's what I finished with. So that's, that was my education. Did you have, ever have an idea of um, falling into a different area of sciences, like engineering, or into the more stronger sort of mathematic? Based. It's funny, it, it really, no, it was the draw of chemistry and it's hard to explain. It was always there. I remember when I was very small, um, some, uh, my best friend's grandmother said to me, so uh, what are you going to be when you grow up? Are you going to be a teacher or a nurse? And I said to her, I think I was maybe grade four, well I'm going to be a chemist. And, and we still look back at that and go, wow, and look at you, you know, 30 years later or whatever it is. And uh, that's what it turned out to be, so, yep. So now you've, um, you've worked at a couple of different phar uh, pharmaceutical companies yes. then, uh, over the time. Um, is, there, is there anyone that uh, has a science background in your family? I mean, is there anybody actually that was a role model for you when you were young, as a young girl? Uh, my father was an engineer. Okay. But I wouldn't say that necessarily either of my parents encouraged me to go into science. It was basically, you know, choose your path, decide what you want to do. And, I mean, for me, the science was right. Certainly for various others in my family, they all follow different paths. But. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, Amgen Canada. Yeah. So, you know, what, what is the company? What does the company do? Give so, us an idea of what your job entails. Sure. So, well, I'll tell you about the company first. Sure. Amgen, um, it's a biotechnology pharmaceutical company. So we make medicines to treat what they call grievous disease. So things like um, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, um, osteoporosis. And we make these medicines. Um, what makes them biotechnology is they're grown in living cells. And, and they're, they're wonderful medicines. And they, as I said, they, they change people's lives. So. Um, what I do within that company in regulatory affairs is I'm like the liaison between the company and between and the regulator which is Health Canada so Health Canada the people who say um, yes your drug is safe and effective and we can use it in Canadian patients and I communicate between Health Canada and our company to get those medicines approved for market and what about um, sort of the advertising and marketing and I know that must be quite regulated then within the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we participate in that. I mean, certainly there's very strict, you know, what you can and can't say. It's, you know, what you've proven your drug can do and how it can help patients. That's what you can say out in the market. So our advertising, yeah, we play a, a bit of a role in that too. What do you love about what you do the most? What do I like? I think, I, okay, what I love about it is the fact that, you know, we play a role in bringing medicines to patients. So, I mean, you can say that across everybody in the whole company, but I mean, if, if we don't do our job right in regulatory affairs, then nobody gets the medicines at all. And it's so nice when you actually get your drug approved, you can make it available to patients, you start changing lives, you start getting them out of bed and back into, you know, the workforce or, you know, making them live longer. There's all these, it's, it's a really, really great part of the job. 
And so biotechnology, give us a sense of what, what biotechnology is. I mean, there are, I'm sure, a lot of viewers who hear the term, but they don't really know exactly what that means. Yeah, biotechnology is it's very um, cutting edge science. So this is really where you, know, you start um, working at the cellular level and, and actually adjusting DNA so you can actually produce the medicines you want in cells. In, inside in cells. cells, yes. Right. And then you produce the medicines and you purify them and, and get them down to exactly the, the, the part of the medicine that's going to help patients. So mainly biologic medicines are usually injected uh, as opposed to pills. Oh, got it. So mm -hmm. it goes straight to the cell quicker? Is that yeah, the idea? It goes right into the body and, and is able to uh, work that way. Right. Um, now, in, so, but you, let's be clear, you're not, you know, this is not Beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> True. <laughs> the, mad si the mad science. I mean, this is something that is um, very innovative. Mm -hmm. um, and where do you think, where do you think it's going to go in terms of biotechnology? Um, you know, what are some of the things that we will be seeing that are on the horizon? Well, I mean, we're looking, you know, more and more into other diseases that aren't treated effectively enough. I mean, cancer is still a huge problem, right, for everybody, not just Canadians, but for the world. So a lot of companies are focusing on cancer. Um, other areas that are unmet medical needs, that's really where the attention is. And, and biologics are, um, they are complicated, but they definitely are technology we didn't have 30 years ago. And so we have great new opportunities opening up by just studying these biologics and, and making new ones and figuring out how we can actually help people. So Karen, we're just going to take a quick break, and this means it's my good to know minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. I'm really eager to hear this one. <laughs> well, what I would say in my career, what's made me successful is saying yes to opportunities. So when an opportunity comes along, you know, even if it's something that scares you, that you might think, I'm not sure I exactly know how to do that perfectly, say yes. It, that is the way that you grow, the way that you learn new things, and the way that you do succeed. It's worked for me. Well, thank you for that. Say yes to opportunities. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Karen Burke, Director of Regulatory Affairs for Amgen Canada. So stay where you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Karen Burke. She's the Director of Regulatory Affairs for Amgen Canada. Um, now, Karen, you were involved in, um, you've conducted a, a recent study. It's a very important study, um, Spotlight on Science Learning. Let's talk a little bit about that and what discoveries yeah, came absolutely. from it. Um, so Amgen Canada, in partnership with Let's Talk Science, conducted this study, and it's called, yeah, the report is the Spotlight on Science Learning. And right. what it is, is we took a look over all of science learning in Canada and tried to determine, you know, what are areas that we're doing well as a country in science learning and what are areas and things that we can improve upon. And so we looked at all aspects like from, you know, elementary education through secondary education and then into post-secondary and, you know, uh, admissions and, and um, people trying to get in um, applications and, and admissions and then off into the workforce and looked right. at the entire continuum of science learning and what that means for Canada. Are we in good shape or not? So are we? Or well, are, are we hurting? You know are we what? lagging behind? Our, our students perform well. So yeah. we're doing well in terms of um, performance but we're not so good in terms of size. Because right. Canada's smaller um, we need to do more to compete on a global scale. So. So what's happening then with, with girls and uh, entering into the sciences and studying science-based um, careers and, yeah. uh, you know, what, what, what's happening? Well, I would say that in Canada we're in pretty good shape with, you know, with the gender difference, it's not so serious as you might think. I think in the old days, um, in times gone past, uh, there were very few, say, female professors. I know when I was in chemistry, we didn't have a lot of female professors in chemistry, and that has definitely changed in the past 30 years. But um, what we're seeing is that um, there is a division, so females are tending to study more of, uh, you know, the natural sciences, health, um, environment, natural resources, and that sort of thing, and the males are studying more on the engineering and math. 
So there's that, there's that separation. Now I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but it might be something that we want to keep an eye on. And, and sure. I think the important thing is to encourage all students that uh, the importance of taking science, continuing your science studies into university and beyond. So would you say then that sort of the gender issue has become passe? I think in terms of, well certainly what we saw in this report, yeah. it wasn't a huge issue, it wasn't a big gender problem. Right. It was just the fact that what we saw was that as kids were getting older, as they were moving um, higher levels in high school, they were starting to drop their science studies. Things like science, technology, engineering, and math, they were dropping out of those courses and then closing doors for themselves. Yeah, it was, um, according to the report, many Canadian youth are dropping science after grade 10. Yeah, and that's a real concern, right? Because then you right. want to get into further education um, at, the, you know, at, at the university or the college or even the skilled trades area. You need to have some background in science to even get into those courses. And if you look at the jobs of the future, that, like, those are the jobs that are going to be um, uh, available. Like 75% of the new jobs between now and 2018 are going to be in high skill areas. And so that's why we need to explain to our children that they need to take these science courses so they can continue and succeed in their careers. So why do you think that there is, is not an interest um, when the sciences you know, explain the world we live in? I mean, what's happening to these kids that they're not interested? Um, I think that, you know, some of those old things like, well, science is too hard, oh, yeah. or I just don't get it. Um, but what we're seeing, and um, I can tell you, for example, that my company, Amgen, we have an award for science teaching excellence, the Amgen Award for Science Teaching Excellence. And that is a award to a, a science teacher across Canada who is showing exceptional talent in actually getting children engaged and getting interested. And so um, that kind of thing, we're seeing that happening, we're encouraging that. I think it's a matter of getting more teachers across Canada to really, you know, look at how kids learn, especially nowadays, and making sure that they're presenting science in a really engaging way so that kids will want to stay in. So, so maybe one of the answers is to be more creative with how it's taught, perhaps, or, yeah. or how it's presented. Yeah. It's or the marketing around it. <laughs> you know, giving kids the hands-on, the experience. Yeah. They get them out in the field and they're doing hands-on experiments, things like that. That's what really gets their attention, Yeah, right? it's fun stuff. And yeah. it's true. It does explain um, the world we, we live in. I mean, I was one of those high school students that had no interest, zero interest in the sciences. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it wasn't until later in my adult years when I realized that you know, science explains the world we live in, yeah. uh, that I had not only uh, a growing appreciation uh, for sciences, but I have been on a path of studying sciences now um, in my own personal time because it does explain our world. Wow. It's beautiful. I think that's, you know, that's the thing you have to think about. If you, when you're choosing your career, your, your education, if you want to study English or art, that's fantastic, but don't leave the science behind. Make sure to carry on enough that if you do want to move on and, and you know, broaden into other areas, um, that you can continue your science. The other thing is, I mean, as you said, it helps you in day-to-day -day life. It helps you, you know, read the newspapers and make critical decisions, right? It helps you understand climate change. Does it exist or not, right? Well, you need science right. to understand that. So, if, if there was one thing that you could say then to, you know, young women uh, that might be watching this interview, uh, what would you say to them? Any piece of advice or wisdom? We would say, um, don't leave your science behind. Give it a try. It might seem scary. Remember my words of wisdom? Give it a try, and this is where your opportunities come from. Don't, yep, yeah, keep your eyes open. Well, Karen Burke, I've really enjoyed this time with you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing a little bit about your, your world with uh, my viewers. Thank you, Shannon. Much appreciated. Well, I've been speaking with Karen Burke. She's the Director of Regulatory Affairs for Amgen Canada. Uh, a little insight into the world of uh, science. And, of course, you can find out more about Karen uh, at my website at extraordinarywomentv.com where you see this interview and uh, her bio and more information about her. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories inspire you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon. And don't forget, follow me on Twitter and I'll follow you back. Thanks for watching.